Well, here in Oklahoma, wheat trials are nothing unusual to see, but here tucked in the corner of the Agronomy Research Station here at Stillwater are some names you might not recognize. We've got Breaker, Samson, and a few others that just you don't hear. Dr. Peepers, what are we looking at here? What we're looking at here, Austin, is spring wheat varieties. Spring wheat? Spring wheat. And the reason we're looking at spring wheat is to give our wheat growers another option for weed control. Okay. We've had a lot of our canola growers tell us that they would like to be out of winter wheat for two years instead of one okay. in order to really clean up the ryegrass and the rye and the goat grass out of their wheat fields. We don't recommend two years of canola right behind each other. Okay. So we thought, well, let's take a look at spring wheat and see whether uh, the spring wheat is planted in the middle of February and we will give us an opportunity then to kill all of those weeds and grasses that come up in the fall prior to planting the wheat crop. Okay, so we're talking about something that has a lot quicker growth than, than what we're used to in this day. Oh, it's yes. In February. That is one advantage of spring wheat is that the winter wheat occupies the field for nine months out of the year. A spring wheat only occupies the field for four months out of the year. So, so just four, four months, you're not going to get a lot of establishment in that, or a lot, a lot of spread. No, you have to plant two bushels per acre because you don't have a lot of time for tillering. Right. And you can see in these different varieties, there's a tremendous difference in the plant height and the maturity. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking at about 20 different spring wheats here, just trying to find the ones that might be most suitable for Oklahoma. Very good. Now where do you find, I mean obviously this isn't something we normally do, so where are you looking to to find the, the stocks to, to grow from here? Well I work with uh, uh, Dr. Klatt, one of our wheat breeders here, mm -hmm. and he has contacts all over the United States and Canada and Mexico. Okay. So he has searched around and talked to the different wheat breeders about the ones that might be most suitable for Oklahoma. Now what we did is we brought in two types of wheat. Okay. One is Durham wheat and the other one is hard red spring wheat. Okay. From what we've seen so far and what we saw last year was the Durham wheats are just not quite as high a yielding force as the hard red spring wheats. Uh, when they're not high yielding, uh, they tend to not produce enough heads to suppress the weeds either. So we get right. spring weeds coming back in and we and that's not what we're looking for here. Yeah, there's an here. awful lot of weed here, so that's not gonna clean your field at all. No, that's, that's not what we're looking for at all. What we're looking for is something like this spring wheat next to it here, the Glens out of North Dakota State University. Okay. Uh, you see the maturity is not much behind our winter wheat here. It has nice size heads and it's probably going to be one of the higher yielding ones again this year. Uh, the spring wheat out of North Dakota State mm -hmm. and spring wheat out of AgriPro like Goliad here on the end okay. uh, have, have performed quite well for us in a test that we did last year. Now we've had tests last year at, here at Stillwater and our research station at Lahoma. Okay. Uh, this year we also put a test out uh, farther west at Dacoma. Uh, and so we're just trying to get a feel there at Dacoma at which of these varieties are more suitable for western Oklahoma. Okay. We don't see uh, a, we will not expect normally the yields of spring wheat to be as high as winter wheat. That's where I was going to go with yield. We're going to be a little less here, you expect. Yeah, we'll be a little less if you planted that winter wheat in September or October. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, every year we'll have some farmers who don't get their winter wheat planted until November or December. When we get into that situation, they might actually be better off planting spring wheat really? than trying to plant our winter wheat very late in the season. Okay, now how does that work? Well, your winter wheat has to get out of the ground and do some tillering also. Right. And if you don't plant until November or December, many times the soil is wet and it's cold and it doesn't do a very good job of getting established and starting to grow. So that'll so, hold down yields. Yeah. Okay. So that's really hard on the yield. And uh, the other thing too is with the winter wheat, you have to control the weeds 
-hmm. for nine months, the diseases for nine months, and the insects for nine months. Spring wheat, take care of it for four months and you're through. So it's a lot lower input cost just for the, the time you're in the field. Yes, it is. We have some of our growers particularly now with the price of wheat being so low, mm -hmm. they're really trying to intensify their cropping system and get more than two crops in two years. And a short season spring wheat may fit into the program better for them than a longer season growing season winter wheat. Absolutely. Now what about protein quality and what we're looking at in terms beyond that yield number, how does this compare to what we're used to growing? Normally, hard red spring wheat has a little higher protein than hard red winter wheat. Okay, so it might and help the quality a bit. It, it certainly should help the quality. It should not hurt the quality by any means. Okay. The biggest problem with wheat right now is uh, the value of the wheat crop is just too low. And we have to do something to improve our profit margin mm -hmm. or we're just not going to be able to sustain production of winter wheat indefinitely in Oklahoma. I guess the last thing I, I, that just jumps to mind is how well does this fit into our current elevator system as far as getting this into our supply? Is there a yes. problem? We do not want to mix winter wheat and spring wheat together. Okay. Uh, well, the elevator operators we've talked to are not too terribly concerned about the possibility of mixing it because as we've told them, the, the spring wheat it's probably going to mature 10 days to two weeks later than the winter wheat. And when it does, there'll be that gap in there when they will know when the winter wheat quits coming in and anything that comes in later is going to be spring, spring wheat. wheat. Okay. So we advise growers that if they're even considering planting spring wheat, to talk to the elevator manager before they ever plant it right. to make sure that he can put it on a truck or in a rail car and send it to a mill that wants spring wheat. Got to make sure you've got the market before you get into the business. Absolutely. All right, well, it's a wonderful looking crop. We, we can't wait to see what comes next. Thank you. Absolutely.